What's up, YouTube? It's Reggie, and let's get into the word for today. False prophets to be destroyed. We're on Deuteronomy chapter 13, if you want to follow along in your own Bible. It says, If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, or giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of the prophet or the dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth to you to know whether ye love the Lord your soul, your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments, obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave on him. And after and that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death, because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God. We have brought you out of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage. So thrust out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put away the evil from the midst of thee. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of the, thy bosom, or thy friend, which is at thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go serve other gods, which thou hast not known, Thou nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are around about you. Nigh unto, unto thee, and far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him. Neither shall thine eye pity him, neither shall thou spare him, neither shall thou conceal him. But thou shalt surely kill him. Thy hand shall be first upon him, first to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people, and thou shalt stone him with stones that he die, because he hath sought to thrust away from the thee from away from the Lord thy God, which thou which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, and all Israel shall hear and fear and shall, shall do no more. Any such wickedness as this is among you, Israel to destroy the idolatrous cities, and thou shalt hear any shall hear say in one of thy cities which the Lord thy God had given to dwell in, saying, Certain men, the children of Belial, are gone among you, from among you, and have withdrawn the inhabitants of the city. Let us go and serve other gods which have, ye have not known. Thou shalt thou inquire and make search, and ask diligently, and behold, if it be true, and that certain things certain, Certain that such abomination is rough among you, thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of the city with the edge of the sword, destroying it utterly, and all that there is, and the cattle thereof, and from with the edge of the sword. And thou shalt gather all the spoil of it into the midst of the street thereof, and shall burn with fire the city and all of the spoil every with for the Lord thy God. And it shall be a heap forever; it shall not be built again. There shall be a cleave not of the cursed. Thing in thy hand that the Lord may turn from fierceness of his anger and shew, shew thee mercy and have compassion upon thee and multiply thee as he has sworn unto the, thy fathers. When thou hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to keep all his commandments which I command thee this day to do which is right in the light of, in the eyes of the Lord thy God. And that's the full um, chapter. Here, let me get some throat kind of dry but um that's the whole chapter 13 now let me read the speaker notes hopefully this can help our understanding a little bit more it says the person among you refers to a fellow israelite being a chosen people does not guarantee that no one would ever violate this covenant the genuineness of prophets and dreamers cannot be determined by their ability to perform a sign or wonder but by their commitment to the lord and their faithfulness in proclaiming his word the message must validate the the works of signs and wonders, and not the reverse. The death sentence for false prophets within Israel reflects the severity of this event. Acts of treason against human rulers and their governments are commonly capital offense. How much more when sedacity and disloyalty is displayed against the kings of kings, which is God? So, just say that if you didn't know. Loyalty to the Lord outweighs loyalty to any other persons, person, family members included. Jesus made this matter clear when he taught his disciples, he that loveth his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. The, ter 
deterrent effect of stoning of Isaac. A covenant traitor to death was to make all Israel fear so that they would no more do such wickedness. Unpunishment individual apostolicity is likely to spread near and far like a disease. The children of Biel, wicked men, lead the inhabitants of their city astray. Other individuals and households will become contaminated. An Israelite city that tolerated apostasy must be burned to the ground like a pagan city. The point that it is the point is that rebellion against the Lord is rebellion no matter what its source. Furthermore, a city once destroyed as the effect of the being was under a curse and often was never to be re rebuilt. This was true of Jericho. And I think that my personal interpretation where it says, um, like at the start it says, where is it? Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. Ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. That's um, chapter 13, verse 4, and I think that basically highlights the importance of that whole chapter, like what it's supposed to um, basically be teaching you, and it's just showing that you have to be faithful to the, like, if you really, because at the end of the day, God gives us free will. You have the choice to choose if you want to follow God, and if you choose not to, um, you just want to inherit the promised land. And then you're condemned, you'll be condemned to hell when um, he comes back and when that judgment day for you comes. And it's really a simple concept as what you need to do. Um, you need to get in this word right here. Um, you need to just build a relationship with God. And it's not like your, your life's going to be like perfect, never having no trials and tribulations. But at the end of the day, the trials God gives us are in place to help us get better and uh, help us grow our faith. And for me, especially, I will say, like, yesterday I had a moment where I was just so, like, sad. And it wasn't because of my own life. Like, I'll say, so I really just started giving everything to God. Like, I've been having great days. I've been having a lot of progress made in my own personal life. But just hearing... Um, some of the stuff that my bros were going through, it was like hurting me because it's like, dang, I don't want to see them, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to see them down. And I remember some unfortunate circumstances that happened. And I remember I was just like, let's just pray. And then we prayed and it just like, I prayed like three, four times and over the situation and it just kept getting worse. We just kept finding more information out that was just making the situation worse. And I remember this where I got to get better at trusting God because it ended up working out. But for me, even like I had to, like I had a um, church small group that I was going to and my bro was like, oh, just go to there. And so I left and I was going as I'm going to, I'm just talking to God about everything. And I started getting like sad and started like crying because I was just thinking about like, I don't know what the situation is right now because when I left, it wasn't the best. And now it's just like I left, you know, and I just started thinking about how I was stressing about it so much. Like I always try to be like to tell you, oh, don't stress all this stuff and tell myself that. And I, I was just giving it to God. Like I'm talking to God and just saying how I felt like in that moment, it's like I prayed three, four times. Like I know I'm supposed to pray in situations. I, I'm not supposed to get feel in a little type of way. Like as far as you, it's natural to feel these emotions, but I'm supposed, I always want to give it to God. And I gave it to God, but I was so impatient. I wanted everything to be resolved in that moment. And God's timing is perfect because literally as soon as I left um, and I get to my church service, I called, like, after I, like, finished crying and everything, I called my bro, and he was just like, oh, yeah, it's good. Like, I'm good now. And it's like the prayer did work. Like, at the end of the day, it did end up getting resolved. And I don't think any way that would have got resolved other than God um, because we tried multiple things, and it didn't work. Um, and I just wanted to have to talk to God and, like, even at my group, I'm like kind of by myself. And I remember um, the leader of the group kind of came and just talked to me. And that's why I love my church family. Like they're very open and they just like, listen, you know, sometimes I just need to get all that off my chest, you know. 
And I remember I was just telling them, like, everything I was going through and why I was feeling that way. And really just getting that off my chest really helped. And it just boils down to I created all this unnecessary stress, all this unnecessary, like, crying and, like, build up in my heart for something that got resolved already because of a lack of faith. And that's what it is. Like, it's a lack of trust in God at the end of the day. I wholeheartedly know, and through my experience, I've seen that God always works. But even me, like, well, all the stuff I go through, I'm trying to get better. Like, God be having me make these videos. I try to I try to get better and just trust God a lot more. And even going, like, pro, like, that's going to be a uh, experience, you know. And I wholeheartedly believe, like, that's, that's what I'm meant to do. And that's going to be a lot of just trusting God and just putting my faith in Him. And... It's scary because you don't know, you don't know what's going to happen day to day, but that's why you got to work on being present. And that's something that I really was emphasized yesterday is that I got to be more present. I got to stop looking so far in the future, trying to want everything because at the end of the day, God's time is perfect. He's never going to leave you um, in a situation that he can't make it like better, you know, and I feel like we stopped ourselves from making that progress or reaching that goal sooner because of our lack of faith. Like, I can say all day I got all the faith, but if God tells me I got it and I don't just trust him, like, because I've been hearing, like, the Holy Spirit more and more. And now it's like, so basically the Trinity, if you like to kind of briefly explain, it's like God is three parts, basically. Like, they're all one and the same. But is God Almighty, you know what I'm saying? Then there's Jesus who came back. He was a man and God on earth. So that's how he lived a human life. And then he started disciple and started working miracles, stuff like that. He's human and God. And then there's Holy Spirit. When Jesus died, the Holy Spirit was put into all believers and all Christians. So like when you actually accept God, you get a Holy Spirit. That's kind of like your conscience. Like it helps you kind of make decisions and stay the course, you know? And for me, I will say, like, now I can definitely hear it. But even in that moment, it's like I think I was blocking out the Holy Spirit in that situation. Because I remember I was just, like, so angry at the whole situation that I was letting my anger get in the way of me actually, like, listening. Where it was just, like, be patient. And I didn't want to be patient because it's, like, the situation is not that good. I want it to be fixed. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like... And it's just so easy to do that. It's so easy to just not trust, to let that fear, let that doubt. But at the end of the day, that's Satan. That's Satan trying to put that and make a bridge between you and God. Like when you don't trust God and stuff, just like look at the Israelites time and time again. Like every time they didn't believe God, it took them longer to get to the goal. Like he told them this was going to happen. And if you just trust me, it would have happened like on my timing in a lot longer, but when you don't trust him and when you stray away from the plan he has from you, it creates more time, more trials that he got to get you through. Like, I know for me, even then, it's just like, dang, I think I make all this progress. And then it's like the goal God is trying to instill in me is trust him. Like, stop trying to lean on my own understanding because that's what it is. It's like, I, I want this fixed now and it's not getting fixed. It's it's like, God, why isn't it getting fixed? Because it's not time. That's what it boils down to. It's not time. It's based on his timing. You can't rush it, and you got to accept that. And that's something that I don't like. I don't like hearing. I don't like being out of control, not having power to do nothing. And it's scary when, you, when like, your friends are telling you and your bros are, like, telling you stuff they're going through. And I'm just like, oh, I pray to God. And then they're like, well, and then they keep telling you, like, stuff that's going on. It's like, dang. It's like, God, like, that's a lot, you know? And something that I got to start doing is being able to um, prioritize, like, me first and then just praying for them, their situations, and then, like, giving God time to work his magic. Because for me, it's just like, if it's not immediate, it's not God, you know? And I feel like that's where we start thinking, is there a God? Is it like all that stuff? And those are natural thoughts, but you gotta, that's Satan trying to corrupt your mind, you know? 
The same way God doesn't tempt you. That's your own lustful desires or your own desires of the world that cause you to battle those temptations. That's why you got to call and tell God everything and just let him in. Because at the end of the day, God is almighty. He can fix any problem. He can get you out of any situation. But you got to be honest with him. Until you're honest with him, you're not going to see no progress. And that's kind of, I think, the lesson that I learned. And also from reading this, like I feel like every time I read my Bible and open up to it, it's like it's talking to me specifically about situations that I'm going through. And it helps me. That's why I'm just trying to take in abundance of information. Like, even after this video, I'm about to read this other Bible. I Well, this other, not Bible, um, this other book I got from the church is called Face to Face. It's like daily affirmations, just readings to kind of talk to God and build a relationship. I read my Bible all the time, even off camera, and then I just kind of resume wherever I stop. I've been watching a lot more videos, just trying to really understand more of the Bible because the more I understand, the closer my bond and my love for him gets. So it makes it easier to trust him the more you know. The more power you know he has, the more. It's just like with anything, like the more you like absorb, the more you know about that and the more you respect it. So that's something that I've been trying to do and I recommend doing. Um, I hope everyone that's fighting battles, whatever your personal battles or tribulations are, I pray that you get through it and that you confine in God. Like, confining in people is good, too. But at the end of the day, those people and whatever outlet you're trying to use isn't going to work like God. Because God is, he has a power. Like, I know a lot of people try to confine in me, and I always try and tell them, go to God. Like, And I ask God for words. But at the end of the day, I can't do the work for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, even for myself, like, when people give me advice, at the end of the day, I got to make the choice to go talk to God and give it all to God. Because at the end of the day, if you don't, you're relying on those other people and they can't do what God can. So, trust God, put him first, and tell him everything. And he knows everything already, so you might as well be honest. Um, stay blessed, and I hope this help video helps you. Um, if you like content like this, subscribe to the channel because we're dropping bangers every single day just trying to help everyone get closer to god help this helps me personally too because i feel like i'm very open and just i watch these videos back and i bet oh okay i learned from that you know so stay blessed and continue on your journey have a good one